Come on in. Come on in. Hey Jace, how you doing? Hi Reed. How you doing? Good, good. Good to see Here you. For a shop tour. All right. Are you ready to give a show of everybody all your fun tools <laughs> you've been collecting your whole life? <laughs> It's been a long time. I've had a, a long time to collect tools, and I've got quite a few because I'm kind of a tool junkie. So, I, know, I think we all are a little bit. I think that's yeah, you and I get along so well. That's exactly why <laughs> we have the same frame of mind. Yep. Well, well tell, it, first start us off. Tell us about the building itself. Yeah, no problem. The, I had the building built. Um, it's actually 40 by 80, and it is a stick frame building. Uh, concrete slab on grade with hydronic tubing in it, so that's how I heat the place. Um, I have a two-foot stem wall, concrete stem wall, all the way around the perimeter of the building. And the main reason I did that was because um, I do a lot of fabricating, and I didn't want to have a problem with sparks going out and hitting a uh, uh, any kind of wood. So now if sparks fly, I don't worry about that. So. Uh, you'll see that some of the, the uh, stem wall is covered with, uh, with some white melamine and it's just because of looks. It's not uh, that it has to be, but I just did it that way. Nice. Um, I've got uh, 12 foot ceilings in here and I kind of calculated that out to go with cost versus height. I needed the height for what I do and I really didn't want to go too high because it just cost a lot more money and and that was always a factor when i built this it's probably about 15 years old now so very cool well where to first what do you think you want to show us well we might as well start let's start here with the uh, first part in the door i i have a plasma cam uh, it's a dhc2 and i do some metal art and some uh, bracketry, some fabricating, I mean, you name it, whatever, whatever comes in the door. And uh, I store all my metal in these racks that I built. And the reason I built them the way they are is because I can move them around with a pallet jack. Uh, I wanted to be able to maneuver them and get them out of the way in case I wanted to bring a vehicle in here, which I've had to do a couple times, but uh, not too much lately. And you might notice that I have my new jib crane up and going, and it is awesome. It works perfectly, exactly like uh, we wanted it to, and it's used a lot. It saves my back, and it's so easy now. I can do this just uh, flawless. It's it's a piece of cake. That's awesome. Yeah. So right next to the jib crane, I've got a couple of toolboxes. Uh, you'll see a few of these. They're just cross from boxes. But I've got them with the, the roller bearings, uh, the ball bearing slides. And this is all of my, I guess you'd call it repair. It's my wrenches, my screwdrivers, uh, hand, tool stuff. hand tools, files, um, American wrenches, metric wrenches. I don't have too many of those. Uh, <laughs> sockets. Uh, you know, I mean, it's uh, it goes down. Screwdrivers, uh, pliers, and I thought about trying to organize these, but you know, honestly, it this works for me. I'm, I'm the same way. It might it, end up in the same drawer. It's just like easy. That. It's just easy. You know, I go through it. I've got some air tools in here. There's a few here, but I've got several in other places, and you know, it just keeps going down. Um, hammers, few here. I've got, uh, always got clamps, never enough of those. Three drawers of oh, them. I could have another toolbox <laughs> of those. Um, so, you know, I mean, that's, that's really kind of where we're at with this. Uh, the other one is, this is one of my oldest boxes. I mean, it's an ancient thing. It's... Inside. we got to take a sneak peek. Okay. It, I, I don't know if I've seen it. <laughs> you probably haven't. <laughs> You'd have to explore. Okay. These are all uh, basically dyes that I've accumulated over the years and they're kind of a miscellaneous they're not in a box or anything but if i have an oddball i'll come to this and look for them yeah. i've used them they're, they're handy to have um, oil, wrench. oil wrenches <laughs> um, 
this, you know, cheapo, you know, basically body yep. tools. Um, don't use those very often, but you know, you need it. You, you need it. You need it. Cool thing about a tool. Exactly. Uh, these are more sockets, the, the deep well sockets. Mm -hmm. And this is a like miscellaneous drawer. Yeah. Um, you'll see some of this stuff, you know, I've got uh, lots of tin snips, pliers, my air tools, torque wrenches. It's always fun to see how many people organize <laughs> or unorganized. Unorganized, there you go. That's probably more of the word on this. Yep. But you know, what's really my goal is that I want to be able to go to somewhere and pick up a tool. Yeah. I can't stand when I have to rummage through something to find something. So I don't know if I've ever seen what's in that one. This is uh, definitely unusual. This one is all automotive stuff. So I bought this cabinet a few years ago because I just didn't have a place to put all my automotive things. Yeah. Uh, and some of the stuff for the ranch, you know, I, I've got to have certain tools. Um, look at this bad boy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the sweet. That's the sweet machine right there. Three quarter drive. It'll do 700 foot pounds. Right. Staple guns. St got staple guns. Right. Wrenches. I've got oddball stuff. I've got uh, diagnostic stuff. This, this is all old school stuff. This is not new tech stuff. I don't have anything that I can plug into a car, um, but it's, it's all good. So. If you want to get that read, you can. No, nah, it's okay. We'll let it go. It, it's probably a uh, political phone call. <laughs> I don't do those. <laughs> Um, extra, I've got all my straps here. I made a, a rack, you know, for all of my, uh, my straps for the crane or for when I use my forks, my skid steer. Yep. So I've got them in one place. I've got several of these uh, rapid reel hose reels. They're manual, but they work extremely yep. well. It's, it's next to the door, so you can go yep. up there and fill a tire. Yep, 100 foot of cord, you can reach almost anywhere. I like okay. It. We covered up your girly poster behind the crane. Yeah, I know. I you know. I, get you some more of those. I feel bad about that, but <laughs> I got more. <laughs> um, so now we're coming into kind of the machine shop ish or machine area. Yeah, maybe I should touch on the plasma cam a little bit. Yeah. What I've done with it. This is a. Uh, it's probably about six years old now, seven years old, and uh, I've done a couple of modifications to it. I've taken the cue from some of the guys that have done this before. I actually have a downdraft and a water table on it. And my goal was to have zero dust or smoke in the shop. And believe it or not, it works pretty darn good. It's, it's extremely well, I'm very happy with it. I use the, uh, the welding blankets to cover the places that I'm not cutting. And so you get a little bit of dust on the outside, uh, but no smoke. Okay. So I'm real happy with that part. And it's a hypertherm? 65. 65? <clears throat> yep. So if you want to drain the tank to, to drain it. What I have now, you can, I, if you can see down below, I have a barrel that I cut off. It's a 55 gallon barrel that I cut off and they will hold all the water in the tank. So if the barrel was empty, I could drain the whole table in that, and then I can service the table. Um, but what I use it for as much as anything <clears throat> is I actually use, and I have about 10, 15 gallons of water in there so I can replenish the water mm -hmm. by just turning on a switch. It, um, pumps it, it pumps it right up into the actual uh, water table. Okay. So, you know, there's a, there's an overflow drain so that I can't overfill this table. It'll flow back into the barrel. And um, I have a, sta everything is stainless steel. So I don't have to worry about any kind of rust with this. And uh, I can pick the parts out real easy from, uh, from the top. Very cool. Yeah, very it wor clever. works very, very well. I remember when you did all that work. Yeah, it was a lot of work. <coughs> it was Some rollers to the edge of your table. I see to, that's so they, you roll the sheet metal. Correct. That too. I take it from this table and actually get it over to these rollers. And once I hit these rollers, it just glides onto my table. You know, I, I put a piece of wood in there. It's a three quarter inch piece of uh, plywood. That's about five, four or five inches wide. 
and I can just slide on there and then I just pull that back out and it set it right in place. So it works well. You used to have to do it that way. I don't anymore. <laughs> I got to get used to that. I know, right? <laughs> so I've also got the, uh, the plasma cam is set up with a, uh, what they call a snap and cut. So you can break the, uh, the machine torch off and change consumables with just unplugging this and taking it off. So it's really, really simple, fast, and easy. Um, and, if it, and if it crashes for some reason, it just boom. It stops. Yeah, so the, um, the, I'm backwards here, I can't see very well. But it, um, it locks back in. And once it dislocates this, it actually stops the machine instantly. So, you know, you don't get any, any uh, damage. Yeah. And then I've also adapted a, uh, an engraver to it. Oh, cool. So I can actually snap this off, hang it over the edge, and snap the engraver, slide the engraver on here, and I'm good to go. It's, it's a matter of seconds. Yeah, you have the... The leads already tied up there for that, right? That's correct. Just... Yep. The engraver is actually, I made a little dovetail. You, it's hanging on the end of the uh, the post there. Yeah. So. What's the engraver look like? Oh yeah, this guy right here. That guy right there. Oh, yeah. The that thing. yeah. Works pretty sweet. So what I did was I located that engraver to exactly where the torch is at. So when I make something on uh, the software, I know exactly where it's going to engrave, and then I can switch heads and I can actually cut it out after I've engraved it. So it's perfect every time. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. Okay. Come around the corner here. I've got uh, more toolboxes. <laughs> Never have too many. Never have too many. I guess we might as well start with these. I this is. I've got a few end mills in this drawer. These are my smaller end mills, a few of them. Um, all new. All new. All new USA. Yep. Yep. Only way. That's the only way. All of them. Uh, this is like miscellaneous drawer. This one I've got my precision pliers, uh, precision screwdrivers, you know, little scissors, you know, things like that. Here's my phone, some phone equipment that, uh, that I have, and uh, I used to uh, run networking systems, so I've got a lot of equipment for that, multiple ways. I've got a few clamps here that I've made Screw off and on. And yep, whatever. all kinds of fixturing stuff. Um, these are old school. <laughs> these are 9.6ers. <laughs> Believe it or not, they all still work, but you know, they're just outdated, so. Yeah. They stay in the drawer pretty much all the time. Here's the newer stuff. I've got some, I got a few things, you know, that uh, I use all the time. Handy to have, and this is just a miscellaneous old stuff again. Yep. This one we don't touch, it's my wife's. Oh, really? <laughs> this, this is the only thing she has in this whole shop. She's allowed this much space, this much room, and that's it. I'm sorry I'm laughing. <laughs> you know, it's the truth. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> it's the truth. She's not allowed in here. <laughs> it, it, it can be dangerous when she comes in here. She, and she normally don't. She calls me from the house. Yeah. So we're all good. Yep. We're all good. Okay. Um, this is my, uh, my Bridgeport. I've had this for... Ooh, 20, 30 years. Uh, I've actually added several things to it. Um, it had the x-axis uh, servo on it. I put the Y and the Z on it. And, uh, you know, that's been a tremendous help. I put the, uh, the Michitoyo digital on the quill. I put the, um, the draw bar uh, actually, uh, air-driven drawbar yeah. on it. Uh, that's been a great Best help. Mod ever. Yes, that's <laughs> awesome. The digital readout is old. It's an old Pathfinder from uh, Tel Teledyne. Yeah, I wonder how big that is. But it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, still works. So, you know, I mean, it's it's one of those things that you know, if it works, don't fix it. Yep. So I and I use it. 
I use it a lot. I like your little uh, plan holder on the side. That's it. You know, I used to be in the computer industry, so this was actually from the computers. You could hang it on your monitor and hang whatever you want, so I adapted it. Yeah. It works. What year is this, did you say? Uh, it's, it's in the 50s, I believe. Okay. It's in the 50s. You mind starting it up for us so we can hear it? No, I don't know if you want to hear it. <laughs> it I, I really think it needs a belt change on it, but... Uh, That's what sounds good to me. It, you it's know, like a it, it's a bridge port. Yeah. Nice. And it's a variable speed, so... You know, I like that part of it. That, yeah, check the dial. Yeah. It's the only way to go. It's handy. And you know, it, it, that was one of the things I was looking for when I, I found this thing and uh, I snatched it up. I actually knew the, uh, the guy that ran this thing. I was fortunate enough, it was in an auction and uh, I talked to him ahead of time and he told me that the majority of its life it's spent on plastic and aluminum. Okay. So that was a major plus for me. Yeah. So it gets used and that's good. I don't want to see it too perfect and clean. It, it gets used here, believe me. You put it in the corner and just all the chips fly off and exactly. just wipe the walls down every occasionally. When well, and that's one of the things that I did with the shop was on, on the whole uh, perimeter of the machine shop side, I used white melamine and so yeah, they don't look too great right now, but once a year or twice a year, I'll go through and just spray them down with uh, 409 and wipe them off. They wipe right off. Yep. Uh, if it was paint, it would be kind of a mess. So uh, that was a goal of mine. You know, it was a thought through process on it. This, this is uh, th what I use mostly when, I, uh, when I'm machining here, when I'm at the Bridgeport. So you gotta go slow on this one. What's uh, okay. in the drawer? I've got my indicators in here. Okay. A, few, a few of them. <laughs> Okay, the next one down is pretty much like the little uh, edge finders, center drills, uh, squares, my rules, my dental picks. Um, I got some levels in here, I don't use them very often, but uh, they're here if I need them. Uh, wigglers, I've got uh, some of these SPI um, stops for the Kurt Vice. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, extra batteries, got to have batteries these days for this. I've got uh, uh, chamfer tools. Next one down is kind of like uh, an extra. It's where I keep all of my uh, Sharpies. Mm -hmm. I go through a few of those with this and extra blocks. If I'm trying to set up a, uh, a fixture or something, I use this stuff for here. I've got uh, a, quite a few of the quarter inch I've got a plate that I use this on for fixturing. Yep. So, you know, you keep it all handy. This one, I've got uh, the my parallels, half inch wide precision parallels. Um, and then I've got a set that are eighth inch wide. Mm -hmm. And then the ones I use the most are actually these. And they are fit perfect to my Kurt Vice. They use a dovetail and they've got a little bit of a divot in there. So when you slide it on, these are made by Tulex. You slide it on, it stays. Yeah. It stays cool. with the jaw and it, they're awesome. They're very, very so good. The jaws in and out and they always stay there and never fall off. Yep. Yeah. They're perfect for that. So, and they have other accessories that you can use with these. Um, I don't have them, uh, but uh, you know, someday maybe. I've got some angle holders, and they do have an actual jaw that has that in. I've got. Uh, That's a jaw you replace. Y yes. This this is one that you can replace, or you can just use it inside the curt. That's okay. not a problem either way. You know, I've used it upside down. I don't think there's really a right way or wrong What's way. That one in your this one is an angle uh, piece that you do want to actually put on your your curt, and you can use pins to hold the different angles. Slick. Yeah, it's it's a uh, five degree increments, so you know it's really handy. Hey, why didn't I that? <laughs> Wish I would have invented that. I got some one, two, three blocks, which I've got actually lots of. Stuff like that. I've got some wavy parallels. Mm -hmm. 
Nice, always handy. They're always handy. Uh, these are just angle blocks that uh, I don't use very often, but uh, I have them. Angle, yeah, literally angle blocks. Mm -hmm. Yep, stack them together. Yep. Next door down is kind of like drill bit stuff. So these drill bits um, are my really good ones. So I have never resharpened any of these. I use them very sparingly, mm -hmm. but I use them when I need a real nice clean hole. If, uh, if I need, you know, this length, if I need a short one, I've got the short stubby ones also. So, you know, they're, they're handy to have. I use these probably more than anything because they're just real handy yeah. and they're very stable. You know, they don't uh, wander very quick. So. I've got several drill indexes. <laughs> yeah, never, have never have enough. Uh, this is just some of my fixturing stuff that I use. It's just uh, miscellaneous. You know, I keep in here. It's a quick clamp. It's, you know, whatever, you know, uh, toad vices. You've got all kinds of interesting stuff here. Yep. And I've accumulated this over years and years. So, you know, there's some of this stuff I haven't used for quite some time. Yeah, you get it for a special job and sometimes you may not need it or may not. Exactly. I've got a few end mills here that I go to right away or sledding saws, um, key cutters. And you know, this is just a few of what I've got that I just kind of started putting together so that it's, it's accessible. Mm -hmm. um, this one here, I keep a few more in here. And they're what I go to if when I don't, uh, I don't have anything in my yeah, other toolbox. The A, B, and C end mills. <laughs> you, you do, believe me, you do. I mean, you know, you don't just use one of these every day, but why when you want one, it's got to be there. Well, if you use it once, it go, it becomes a B end mill. Maybe. Yep. Yeah, then it goes in a different drawer. Different drawer. Yep. <clears throat> so. Cabinet. Oh yes, we don't want to miss this one. This is uh, this is some good stuff in here. Um, I've got, I got a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> nothing wrong with a lot of stuff. No, there is nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know, I've got uh, dial indicators, mm -hmm. uh, you know, several of these. I've got th my Noga, some of my Noga tools uh, for holders in here. I've got some Sterrett. Everybody, everybody's seen these. Okay. Um, different configurations for different reasons you know so you you know i try to keep one geared up so that i don't have to fuss around and set it up you know for different setups you know and that's that's really critical for me you know time is money on something like that um, i've got this is a suburban tool magnetic mm -hmm. that you can use for grinding that uh, works very well yep. Um, I've got a 24 inch digital Michitoyo caliper. Mm -hmm. I use that a lot. Uh, I used to use it all the time. I used to make uh, thermoform molds and I would need them a lot. These are kind of like sets, but they're miscellaneous, um, fly cutters, end mills, you know, I mean, you can go down yeah, the line with them all. Bits, yeah. scoring bars, annular cutters. Annular cutters, you know, I've got a few of those. Yep, you can never have too many. You never have too many. I, <laughs> I use them a lot. I've got a lot of the 5C collets, they're royals. Um, I've got uh, expanding mandrels. These are, uh, I use these a lot for my, uh, my plasma cutting. If uh, I cut a hole, I need it round. I use these, these are what they call Wayne reamers. They're basically uh, structural steel guys use these. Mm -hmm. They're good for that. They last forever. Yep. Um, got different stops, you know, for the bridge port. Yep. Different, more chucks. Um, some parallels, I've got some cutters yep. that work very well. Um, 
Uh, going down, I've got, uh, this is for, basically I made it up for my rotary table and uh, it bolts right down to it so I can have a chuck on it if I need it. Mm -hmm. uh, my rotor table's in the corner. This is extra. Looks like you haven't used it in a while. Uh, we need to get bust that baby. <laughs> <laughs> you would like that. <laughs> Actually, I used to use it a lot, but I haven't used it in a while, but you're right. It's, it's a good tool to have if you have the job for it, you need it, you got it. Yep. That's a big deal. Emery. Emery. Yeah, I've, I've got 5C collet holder. I got a couple of them center with it. So this, if you're not familiar, that you put these into this. Correct. Where am I at in the lens? Yep, so that's what that's for. Yep. Hold round stock. Exactly. There. It also will go into these. Indexer. Yep. I have a second Kurt Vice here that is basically set up exactly like this one, so I can use them in uh, in tandem, use them together. Um, scale. You never know. You need to scale for. Believe it or not, I use that <clears throat> for when I I have a, a plasma quench that I mix up and I have to weigh it out, so I use that for that. Yeah. I have back here. A lot of guys won't know what this is. It's a it's a Volstro. It's actually a part that goes on the uh, bridge port head and you can cut radiuses with it. What? Cold yeah. Out. <laughs> you know you haven't. It's one. <laughs> you got to see it. Yeah, this is it's not light, but and it's not cheap, but it's it's an excellent excellent machine. Looks brand new. I've used it a lot. Um, but I haven't used it in a few years, but I do keep it so that, you know, it's, uh, it's ready to go anytime I need it. And it cuts perfect radiuses on, on what you need. So you use a different uh, style collet, you know, for these. I think these are R32s. I'm not yeah. sure about that. I think they're 32s though. But, awesome. but yeah, it works really well. Very cool. Well, now I know you have it. <laughs> <laughs> you ever need it, you know where it's at. Yeah, it's good stuff. You know what's interesting is that, you know, there are a lot of tools out there, and there are a lot of tools that are specific to do a certain job, and they do it really well. Yeah. And that's what I like about that. But that's what makes me a tool junkie, you know. I've got to have the right tool. Okay. Come around. Um, the next one is, uh, as you may or may not have seen, I have a few of the Stanley Vidmar cabinets. Yeah. So I bought this one specifically for these. Yeah, look at that. Mm -hmm. So I've got a few end mills. <laughs> yeah, pick a size, any size. It, any size. It's like I've got probably more than one. Yeah. Um, Killer. Yeah, so these are my smaller ones. They're, they're typically from a sixteenth to a quarter inch. Um, I've got center drills, uh, quite a few of them. I got stubby drills. Um, next one down, it just gets it, bigger in size. Mm -hmm. That's really what it does. These are pretty much all quarter inch to five sixteenths. Nice. All USA. Yes. All, all. Radius. I have two flute, two flute. pretty much anything. Yeah. yeah, pretty much anything you need oh, wow. with this. A lot of, so all high speed steel mostly? Mostly high speed steel. I do have a few carbide and I've been collecting carbides for a while. So, I mean, I've got, I've got quite a few carbide, but not any, anything close to my, uh, my high speed steel stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've got different shank sizes. I've got, you know, different cuts, different, uh, some have been reground, but they're super sharp. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, if, if I go to the drawer, some, one of these drawers, uh, I can pick anything I want and it'll pretty much cut. Very cool. Yeah. Good stuff. Big, I am not hurting for end mills. These are all reground, <clears throat> so they work really well. Um, I've gotten to the point of where when they're dull, I just toss them. Yeah. <laughs> it's not worth regrinding them for me. 
And then the last one is the bigger, bigger stuff. I actually have an open, open slot. I have more room. Well, I, yeah, I do. And I, this isn't the only one. I've got another cabinet over there. Yeah. But these are up to, I think, one inch, okay. what I've got in here. Which is about all the bridge board really wants to it handle is. anyway. Unless you're doing plastic or aluminum and you want to go really slow, yeah. uh, you're going to end up not really using too big of an end mill. Yeah. Um, I use a shell mill for stuff like that, you know, and it actually works pretty well. Yeah. It, it cuts really well. Uh, I guess this would be my next cabinet. Uh, this is another one. It's basically services a lot of my stuff here, whether it's the mill or the lathe. I've got my cutting oils, lubricants. I've got metric taps and drills, left-hand drills. Um, there's a lot of stuff I use for the ranch, you know, my uh, um, keys, screws, yeah, expanding pins, I mean, all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah. I make my own air hoses up, so, you know, I have all of these different size that I can use different size hoses, different size ODs, mm -hmm. and I have a crimping tool that I use to crimp that all so I can do it all here. I don't have to go anywhere to get that stuff. Yeah. Um, my tap and die stuff. This one here I use mostly for uh, dies. My taps, I have another cabinet that I put it in, but this is a set that I bought a long time ago. It's actually a Granger uh, made by Dayton. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure who actually makes it. I don't think that they make it themselves, yeah. but it's handy. You know, it's, it's all right there. Uh, I've got another set I use for that that's metric. Uh, another set that's uh, circle dies. Um, my drills, my taps and drills, they come in this Hewitt box and they're set up to where, you know, you've got a drill and you've got a tap, you know, so you've got them all together. That's all up to a half inch. Okay. So, you know, I've got extras for this and I love going to a drawer, picking it up and going. These are my tap holders. I use these for when I'm doing the mill or the lathe. Yep. I got all diff three different sizes of those, so they're pretty handy to have. Um, these are my extra drills. I've just got a few. Yeah. So, you know, I keep extra stuff there. Yep. Good stuff. Yeah. Okay. My Wilton Vice is awesome. Wilton Vice. Yeah, I put that in about two years ago, and I actually cut a plate for the base of it and bolted that down to the bench, and then I bolted that to the uh, the plate, and it's solid. It doesn't go anywhere. My bench is a mess right now. I'm trying to go through some stuff on that. Um, this is my surface plate, so it's it's basically just a uh, precision granite. Um, and it stays covered all the time unless I really need it. I just pull the cover off and use it. It's, I bought it brand new mm -hmm. and I try to keep it in pristine. Piece of wood. Yeah. Over the top. Yeah, this, it just comes off. And then you can access the plate itself. So, you know, it, it stays really well here. Yeah gets used a lot. I have a couple of different height gauges and stuff that I use, different measuring instruments and stuff. So I, this saves the top though. Okay. Um, these two cabinets I purchased probably about uh, two years ago now. <clears throat> and I, I was running out of room to store stuff. So this kind of is how I ended up, you know, utilizing the least amount of footprint with the most amount of storage. So um, as you can tell, I'm a Stanley Vidmar guy. I like, I like their cabinets. I love how they work and how much they can hold. Yeah. So I've got a lot of my precision instruments in this. Uh, you know, I mean, you name it, I've got quite a few different things in here. You know, I keep, 
stuff all in its own last word indicator. Mm -hmm. This is the bigger version of that. It's a uh, it's back. Mm -hmm. It's got all the accessories to it. Some of this stuff has been rarely used, but yet it's when you need here. It, you need it. It's here. Yep. This is just more fixturing stuff. Yeah. Um, everybody likes stare at boxes, right? Planer gauge. Yep. Recognize those back there. Yeah. Here. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Rollers. Rollers. Mr. Keith Fenner. <laughs> this yep. is for you, buddy. There you go. <laughs> I, I use them. They're awesome. These are uh, inspection gauges. Pins. Pin gauges, yep. Yep, gotta have those. Full sets. Um, got a Michi Toyo. These are the uh, cage blocks. Yeah, nice. Super clean. Bought them brand new. Very nice. Keep them clean, they stay good forever. Yep. You know, these are the tiny, tiny little gauges. They're, uh, I rarely get into these because these are tiny. They're really <laughs> tiny. Eyeglasses. Those are, tiny yeah, <laughs> very small. <laughs> But you never know. You know what? When I was younger, it was no problem to do this. But you know, as I get older, the uh, the eyes aren't as good, and so you got to have glasses to do everything or whatever. Yep. Um, I have a uh, a swag off road uh, roller, and I actually made myself a roller for rolling some wider stuff. And so I went and I bought his uh, rollers from him, and then I modified and manufactured, so, made whatever I needed. So what's in the box is the actual die? Yeah, these are all die sets, so they're heavy stuff. This is for rolling um, flat bar on edge, mm. one inch tube, five eighths tube, three quarter tube, uh, small round rollers. These are. They're heavy, so this really tests this uh, drawer. this drawer. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, they do a great job, by the way. I I can't make them for what they sell them for, and they're in in they're made very well. Yeah. Very well. I have a pretty good supply of uh, Sherlock, mm -hmm. the thumbscrew knobs. So, yeah, different sizes so I can make my own, you know, of those. It's, so if you don't know what these are for, tell them what they're for. What you do is you take a socket head cap screw that is designated for the size for this and uh, basically go to an arbor press or a vise or whatever you want to and press it in there and then you got a thumb screw. Mm -hmm. uh, they're pretty sweet. They, you can't torque these really well, but for hand thumb screws, yeah. you can't beat them. They work really well. And I've got different sizes, different colors, different uh, styles, you know, round. I've got some that are bar, like this, so you have a crossbar. Mm -hmm. I came across this, uh, this deal and basically <laughs> bought everything he had. So, you know, it was like, I got a lifetime supply. <laughs> <laughs> Two or three lifetimes. Yeah, yeah, but at least, at least. This drawer doesn't have a lot in it because of what's in it right now is really heavy, but eventually I will have some stuff that you might know going in this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm working on a base plate for a, a fixture table or fixture plate, and this is where this will go. This is a, the tool that I made for my quarter inch fixture and 5 16 inch fix, fixtures, uh, and this bolts either into a vise or you can put it anywhere. I can bolt it down to my rotary table. Mm -hmm. You know, it can go anywhere. Real handy to have. Okay. 
Uh, come around the corner. Let's go through the cabinets first, and then uh, then we'll we'll look at some yeah. some so machines. Side now, we were over there. Over. Just the opposite. Yep. Some of you guys are going to notice and, and recognize some of this stuff. I, I'm a big fan and supporter of uh, Stan Zinkowski and Randy Richard. Obviously, I like uh, their tools. They're extremely good quality and well made. So I use them a lot. I keep them in the top drawer and this is my go-to drawer for, you know, uh, setups, measuring, that kind of thing. Love the black book. I use it all the time. Um, Put carpet in the bottom, that's always nice. I did. I, I went uh, to my local home store and I bought indoor outdoor carpeting and I carpeted everything because it stops them from sliding around and makes it quiet so you don't have the stuff slamming around and against each other all the time. Yep. Um, sure Tomiko, these are depth gauge. Yep. My Michitoyo 12 inch dial caliper mm -hmm. you know things i use a lot i leave them here you know i can get to them the uh my sterret i've got uh you know all kinds of sterret stuff i it, like everybody else i love sterret yep. my no good deburring tool stuff mm -hmm. one two three blocks you can never have too many of those nope. i've got a few of my carbide inserts in here that i use all the time and i'm still doing some organization on that, but I'm, uh, I'm pretty close to where I want to be for what I use all the time. Yeah. Uh, you got to have stuff handy, you know, you just want it to be right there all the time. Uh, some of my tool holders, I don't have too many in here yet because most of the time I have what I use on the machine. Yeah. More tool holders. More holders. These are um, basically inside outside thread mm -hmm. and I have machined that off to work in my small lathe so you know I you can clamp them in anything but yeah mm -hmm. handy to have okay this is another setup type of thing got some setup blocks I've got uh, the um, edge makes this. This is handy for my lathe. I've got it set up now for my big lathe, mm -hmm. and it's very nice for uh, for making thinner material. If you want to cut off thinner material, yeah, uh, they do a nice job with that. Mm -hmm. I've got the other style that they're just magnetic, um, but they're not as universal or as adjustable as as the edge is. So, sure. pretty handy stuff. And you're not going to believe this, but I have one drawer that's empty. <laughs> I'm saving that. It's going to make a great thumbnail. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the only drawer I have in this whole shop that's empty, believe me. These are uh, different style and different size drills. Uh, the silver and Deming, you know, kind of st stuff where, you know, it's a reduced shank. And I've got quite a few different sizes of those. I got some pin punches. I got some good sized drill bits. Yeah, empty fours. Um, miscellaneous. There's there's not a full set, but they're kind of oddball stuff. They're in 30 seconds and 64th, so they're kind of nice to have. Uh, this is where my some drills are. These are all empty twos. I had a very good friend of mine that uh, turned me on to these. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Yep. I use them all the time, by the way. Have enough of those. They're awesome. It's nice to have a full index. It's full, and they're sharp, and they're yeah. clean. Uh, this is actually a, a reamer set. Mm -hmm. You know, so you got uh, uh, over-unders, which oh. is handy to have. Uh, I've got, uh, this is my... Broach. Broaching set. Nice. Yeah. Very nice to have. They're handy. Like new? Yeah. Everything here gets used, but it don't get abused. Yeah. This is a square brooch that I just purchased. That's a nice half inch brooch. Perfect. Um, I've got uh, 
Criterion boring heads. Yep. They're great. This thing is 35 years old. Still going. Oh, it cuts awesome. Cuts very good. And then just miscellaneous extra tool parts. Nice. This is, a, this is, believe it or not, the only Lista cabinet I have. Um, and even though Lista and Stanley Vidmar are now the same company, uh, they're both the same quality. I think they're both excellent quality. I got a deal on this thing, and it's probably 35 years old. Uh, and I wish I could have bought more at the time. I couldn't afford it, but I paid 400 bucks for this thing. And it had all of these red little plastic containers in here. The drawers were full of them and I couldn't have bought just those for the 400 bucks. Mm -hmm. So what I've done is I've, uh, this is all kind of like for the ranch stuff too. I've got wall anchors, I've got metric screws, which are just minor amount of them, not very many of them. Electrical connections, you know, pretty much anything I need in here. If I don't need it, I get it and put it in here. <laughs> <laughs> My gimbal's messing up. Okay, Is it? we're okay. We're good. Okay. Pop rivets, stainless steel, steel, um, staples and nails, clamps. I mean, you know. Selection in the hardware store. <laughs> it's a hardware store. <laughs> uh, blind rivets, some set screws. I don't have a full set here, but I've got a container that has pretty much all set the inch you use. So there's a lot of these drawers that have miscellaneous stuff in them that I just uh, had to find a place for it. Yeah. So when you see miscellaneous, it, it is miscellaneous. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's, it's things you go to, woodruff keys, you know, um, snap rings, you know, I mean, this kind of stuff, you just can't have enough of it. I mean, you, you don't throw it away. I it's, never. You just need a place for it. That's right. That's the goal. Exactly. Yeah. As long as you got a place for it and you know where to find it, you'll always use it. These are just uh, miscellaneous uh, machine screws. The most popular that you use. So, you know, I, I have uh, washers, nuts, um, Anywhere from, I don't go down below 632 as much, but 632 through 1024, 1032s, uh, quite a few of them. Anything bigger than that, and I have uh, different containers I'll show you. This is my stainless drawer. So I do quite a bit of stainless work, and uh, this is where I come for that. Nice. And again, it's not complete, but it's what I use. Yeah. Sheet metal screws. <laughs> mm -hmm. Whatever we need. I got a feeling we're going to be invaded here shortly. Oh. <laughs> I'll bet you that's Bill. So this again is just uh, kind of miscellaneous. I got springs, uh, miscellaneous socketed cap screws, shoulder bolts. You know that we've used on projects and stuff, and and uh, I've got extras of them. Yeah. So, you know, you always have a place for that stuff. Switches. I had a very good friend of mine, have a very good friend of mine that used to be in the switch business, and she would she would say, hey, I got a bunch of demo stuff. Do you want it? Mm -hmm. Why would you turn that down? <laughs> so, you know, this is where I come for my switches. Some springs, clamp, hose clamps. Yep. Miscellaneous washers and nuts, small versions. Mm -hmm. So pretty much quarter inch through three eighths on this drawer. Some half inch, some five eighths, some bigger. So you know, there's there's a, a menagerie of, of things in here. Big washers, fender washers, you know, whatever, whatever you want. Very cool. Yeah. Cool stuff. My bolts, as you can see, a lot of stuff is full. That's right. <laughs> I like full drawers. Uh, if I don't have them full, I make sure they're full. So, same thing. You know, it's it's miscellaneous, but you know, I have enough of some yeah. things to make things happen. 
better than the five gallon bucket that I got all mine. <laughs> well, and it's better than driving, you know, 30 miles to town to get one bolt. And that's, that's my problem. You know, I, I live out here far enough to where it can be an issue. So mm -hmm. especially if I'm making something or I've got to repair something short term, you know, I need to get it done. I have um, my Dremel stuff in here, my jigsaw blades, uh, wall anchors, staples, helicoils, yeah. you know, all interesting stuff. Here's cabinet hardware, and uh, some of you might know what these are. They're actually for coax, coax fittings, mm -hmm. for running uh, stereo equipment stuff, telephone equipment stuff. Pipe fittings, I've got a few here that I use that are smaller, and I've got a whole lot more that are somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a small version of what I've got here. Um, I have a, a an assortment of double stick tape, you know, foam tapes and stuff. I, I like 3M VHB tapes. I've got some of that here. I've got some that are less expensive stuff. So, you know, it just depends on what we do. I've got transfer tapes. I uh, used to deal with that a lot. So I've gotten to know what works and what don't. Mm -hmm. Here again, cabinet hardware, uh, nails, screws, some lag bolts, eye bolts. Yep, you name it. Mis in here. Yeah, it's miscellaneous. And here again, I got some more tape stuff. Tape. Velcro. Y you know, you never know when you might need some Velcro. <laughs> I mean, handy. Yeah, I have it. I have it. Okay. Cool. Okay, where next? Well, let's go here. This is my my lathe station. Um, I have two lathes. Uh, this is a 1940s, I think it's a 46, I'm not sure of the year, Victor. It's a 1640. And uh, I bought it used. I've had it for a few years now and it uh, it works really well. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the uh, the swing on it and the power of it. It works good. I put a digital readout on it, uh, which really helped. I got an Alorus tool post for it. And then I made the back splash for it so that all the oils and stuff wouldn't go flying into the room. Oh, stainless um, steel. Yep, all stainless. I made that oak top so that I could screw on all of my tool holders. And they're just handy to have. But how do you, how'd you hold the tool holder on there? <laughs> I've taken and it's it's all stainless, so I just tack welded uh, verticals in there, and it goes right into the dovetail of the actual tool holder. So it's real simple, you know. It, it just is fast and easy. Yeah. I don't have everything there, but I've got the majority of what I use all the time. So it's it's very nice to have. Yeah. I put in a, um, a spray mist system, so it's cool mist. Uh, it has less flinging yeah. <laughs> and less of a mess. Um, and I still use oil once in a while, but most of the time it's just cool mist. The size on this is? It's actually two inch. Two inch? Yep. On a 1640. Yep. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice size. It, uh, it's not the longest one in the world, but you know what? It does everything I need it to do. My cool mist is turned on right here. Uh, I got air on every machine so that I can get it, keep it clean. You have a uh, single phase power here. Yes. Yep. So I run this off of, along with the bridge port, I run them off of static phase converters. When I first started, I had the option of going with three phase in this building and I would have never dreamt that I would have what I have right now <laughs> in here. So I said, no, I'll go with single phase because it was going to cost me another six or seven thousand dollars to go three phase. And I ended up, uh, actually I've got uh, three machines that I need phase converters on. So, um, you know, at first it was a one machine at a time. If it had been all three at one time, I probably would have done a rotary. Mm -hmm. The rotaries are, are a nice way to go. Um, but, you know, I've, got, I've had that static phase converter on my bridge port now for probably close to 25 or th no, 30 years. And it hasn't given me one speck of problem. 
but I don't do a lot of heavy milling either. You know, that's one of the issues. The other one is my surface grinder. Um, yeah, it's three phase. We'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that eventually. And then this this bad boy. Mm -hmm. uh, this one here, I could probably use a rotary on because you know it's got the power to do what I need to do. But yeah. you know, I deal with what I've got. Yep. And then behind you. Behind me, I've got uh, my first lathe, and that's actually a um, it's a Maximat Super 11. That's made by um, Emco Meyer. It's not an Enco, it's an Emco Meyer, and it's made in Austria. And it's a precision lathe, um, and it does very well. I bought it almost brand new. It w went to a trade school, and they used it for a year, and then they traded it off and, and sold them. And I was lucky enough to um, know the salesman and he knew I was looking for one so he let me know and I jumped on it. I grabbed it right away. It's been an, an extremely good lathe for me. But it has its limitations. You know, it's 11 inch swing. It's got a, uh, I think it's a inch and a quarter through hole. Um, the bed's not that long. It might be 24 inches total. Mm -hmm. But you know, for, for little precision stuff, it's very good. Uh, I've always wanted to put a digital read on it, but you know, I, I just haven't done it. I use the dials. Sure. Old school stuff. A little workstation. Yep. Next to it. Both of that. these, so I can work off of this both ways. I keep um, the stuff that I use all the time in here, my scales, uh, wrenches that I need, uh, jaws for the chucks, you know, little things like that. I've got them right here. So, you know, I just, uh, my coolant and all that stuff, I keep it right there. Cabinet behind you. This cabinet is, is uh, top drawers for my surface grinder tools uh, and uh, a couple of belts for my belt sander. Okay. So I keep uh, a few of those in here. The next one down is basically my extra lathe tools. Got some small chucks, <laughs> uh, some big chucks. I've got uh, some uh, a three jaw and a four jaw for my Emco Meyer. Uh, I've got a collet closer for this. Um, you know, just miscellaneous extra stuff here. Dead centers, live centers. Mm -hmm. Next one down, these drawers get heavy. This is uh, brass and stainless steel. Just rim stuff. So if I need small pieces, I just come to here. Uh, some sheet stock, but most of it's uh, smaller stainless, different kinds of brass. Uh, you know, if you need bushings and that kind of thing. Aluminum, same thing. Uh, just miscellaneous. I've got this in a couple places so that you know it's it's handy to have. You just never know when you're going to need a small piece of this stuff. The steel. I like the same thing. Yeah. Gotta have all that handy. You know, you, you part. I always say that you can't have too much of this, but you really can. <laughs> you really can. <laughs> it's but it, it's that time that you need that piece that you know you you really want to find it. This is just all miscellaneous extra parts for tools that I have that had other things mm -hmm. that I don't use. So I just keep them, just in case. Yeah. You never know. Nice. Drill press is a clausing. It's, a, it's an old drill press, but I went through the whole thing. A friend of mine gave it to me, and I went through the whole thing, and now it serves as a great drill press for me. I made a little table so I could put my vices on it, uh, but it is a floor standing. So, you know, it's pretty handy. Yeah, floor standing, but a table around. Table around the neck, so I don't have to bend down to the floor to pick Good stuff idea. up. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. Okay. What's next? Uh, let's grinder. It's a challenger. I keep it covered all the time, but it's, a, it's an H618. So it's six inch wide, 18 inches long. Magnetic chuck, I always keep covered, so you know it's uh, it's in pretty good shape. And you know what's funny is I tried to sell this, oh I don't know, probably four years, five years ago, 
And I'm actually glad it didn't sell because <laughs> now I use it. <laughs> I, now I use it. It's, uh, it, it's a great tool. Um, when I first bought it, I actually bought it from a guy that made parachutes for drag cars. And he just didn't want it in shop anymore and I helped him out with that. Very cool. This is one that has to have a phase converter on it. It is a three phase motor, but it, it runs like a dream. It's just super smooth. It's got very few hours on it. Um, I started to actually repaint the whole thing. And I, the whole cabinet used to be this light blue color mm -hmm. and it was just too much for me. So I was, I was going through and redoing it all. And I just stopped at that and going, oh, you know what, why? Yeah. It's, that's the color they were, why not leave it that way? Sure. So I did. It all works perfectly. The uh, oiler on it, everything works great. And the only problem with it is it's manual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's jump to here. This is a, it's a Carolina 40 ton arbor press, or, or not arbor press, uh, hydraulic press. Um, I bought the Swag Off-Road plates for it so that you know you can bend. I've got a finger brake and a regular brake for it. I use that once in a while. I made some shells that I can actually just uh, just put it back on again. It. I wish it was electric, but you know, for as much as I use it for, it works very, very well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a tool that you use and go from there. These are Swag Off-Road plates. They're super strong. They're, they're sturdy as hell. They're, uh, I saw a video of uh, these Harbor Freight plates that they have shatter. Yeah. I went and bought one of these right away, a real big set of them, so I'll never have that problem. Nope. <clears throat> so that, cool. that's good. Uh, this is kind of my grinding area. Um, bought this brand new. This thing's awesome. It, uh, it's just two inch wide belt. Mm -hmm. I've got several different wheels for different grinders. You know, I bought this from an auction not too long ago, yep. so that works. I've got a, an old Craftsman grinder that I got a um, buffing wheel on with a green wheel. I've got one that's got a coarse wheel. This is an old six inch grinder, Baldor. This is a Scotch-Brite wheel on it, mm -hmm. uh, so it's handy to have for that stuff. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Next. Behind you. Okay, so we'll come over to these Stanley Vidmars. When I bought these, they had drawers and they had shelves from here on up. And I just said, nah, you know what? I'm going to change that. I want to put drawers in everything because it's just easier for me to, to store everything in, in drawers. Um, and it might look goofy because I put gray in there, but I put them in on another order that I had in and uh, I just said, I'll just leave them all gray because if I ever replace these with different size drawers, I'd do it all in gray. Mm -hmm. Gray is my color. So anyway, the, uh, this drawer has got miscellaneous drill bits in it, uh, lots of them. <laughs> They're something that, uh, you know, you never, have enough you, ne drill you never have enough drill bits. No such thing I, as too much tool. Yeah, I just, <laughs> I, I just, and here's more. Uh, these are a little bit bigger, you know, I just go from size. I didn't separate them by exact sizes, but you know what, I just come over and yeah. go through them if I need them. Not a big deal. Uh, here's my bigger end mill stuff. Stuff like this. Yeah. Now you have the tool for this. I do. <laughs> you have the tool for this. And my guess is someday you will probably have this. <laughs> so, you know, I've got, I've got all these, uh, you know, they're, they're all brand new, old stock, but they're brand new. Uh, and there's, they're all USA made. So uh, the beauty of it is I'll never run out of end mills. Well. From here, I go down to socket head cap screws. We talked about them earlier. I actually have a, a pretty much full range of 516s and 3.8s socket head cap screws because I use them all the time for tooling or for tools and stuff like that. So, you know, it's I got some miscellaneous stuff mixed in here. 
but this pretty much covers everything up to two inch. Uh, so, you know, if, if I need a 516 cyclic cap screw, I've got it. 3 eighths, same thing. Uh, covers it through two inch long. From there, you know, typically I'll buy it per whatever job I've got to have. It's not something I need to have. These are just basically my stereo miscellaneous stuff, my coax wire, phone wire, wheels. I keep horseshoes in there. Uh, another thing that I do is I have a key machine so I can cut my own keys. And so I've gone through and uh, bought some old stock from a company and sorted them all out and have them categorized so that if I have a blank key and you need a key, I can cut it. Sweet. Yeah. Got them written down so I can look at them and find them. These are all house and padlock keys. Uh, you know, so, you know, they're pretty much divide it up to whatever you need. You know, if you got a schlag or if you got a quick set, I mean, that's a piece of cake. I can cut them in less than five minutes. Cool. So, this is automotive and motorcycle keys. Yeah. So, <laughs> 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 these uh, comes down to the, the ranching and farming stuff. I, this is all for my spring tooth parts. Yep. Uh, if I need bolts or clamps or clevises or washers or nuts or whatever, I have them all there. Uh, these are all my, my Torx wood screws that I use. Uh, I love those things, they, they go through like nothing. They hold really, really well. Go down to lag bolts and carriage bolts, mm -hmm. trailer lights, miscellaneous, some nails. I don't like doing this anymore. I like the guns. Yeah. <laughs> Pull the trigger. Yep. Silicone sheets, hydraulic hoses, Velcro, rubber molding stuff. Mm -hmm. I make my own gaskets, so if I I need to, if I had, I've got rubber, I can. Uh, uh, it's Buna and stuff. I can actually make all that stuff here. <clears throat> Here's some more trailer parts. Mm -hmm. Then I've got electric cord on the two bottom ones. <clears throat> Here I've got all of my drip mist irrigation stuff. Yep. This is uh, kind of like uh, jigs and fixtures or, or uh, rigging stuff. Uh, so I've got, uh, I can make up my own cables if I've got the right cable. I've got all the clamps, I've got the tool to make them. Uh, you know, I mean, I, handy for that, especially for the farming side of that, I use that quite a bit. Here's my, uh, my two inch, most of all of my two inch, some three inch abrasives that I use for, for my grinding or polishing or whatever I need. I've got several die grinders that I use for this, so. Very cool. Yeah, they're handy. And then uh, next door down is three inch. I have both styles of this where, you know, I've got the, uh, this used to be called the standard abrasives uh, connection, and this was the uh, roll lock. Uh, now it's all 3M, so, you know, they're, I think you can still get the, uh, the old standard abrasives, but uh, it's not standard abrasives anymore. It's all 3M stuff. Different adapters for it. My sprayer, <clears throat> sprayer parts. So if I have a problem with my spraying rig, I can actually come in here and put on new nozzles, different fittings, you know, different uh, clamps, whatever I need, you know. It's, this is for my tube bender that I actually made. Um, and these are all the, uh, the dies that I have for it. So, you know, it's handy to have. I don't have all of them, but I have the majority of the standard dies. Yeah. From half inch all the way through, to, I think it's inch and three quarter. My computer stuff, this is a full drawer of antiques. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> electronics, bracket, electrical miscellaneous. That's it's funny, the newest stuff made is the antique. It, the this stuff is all antique. I was back in the day, it was, you know, state of the art, but it's, ago, yeah, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> exactly. I've got two sets of cutting torches. I got the small set that it's uh, real portable. And then I've got another big set that I use. Um, don't need to probably go in there. That's uh, my Adronic mechanical room, room yeah. Uh, open the door. You want to see it? Because you said that this was where your air compressor is. Yep, it is. And excuse the ladder, I had to access my uh, attic. Yep. So I got the ladder in the way right now. But I've got my dust collection system in here for the wood shop. This is my hydronic system. Uh, it's actually a, an electric boiler that uh, is used, and this was put back in the day when this wasn't so popular, so we actually made the manifolds instead of buying them. My compressor is a Quincy. I love this thing. It, it works great. It's five horsepower, two stage, 80-gallon uh, tank. It runs the plasma cutter. It runs everything in my shop, yeah. everything. My, all of my lines, might have noticed, are copper. I elected not to go to uh, to plastic or anything like that because, for one, you know, rapid air wasn't even around when I put that in, so I just stayed with copper I like for everything. The way copper lines look. Yeah, they, clean. they are, and once you get used to doing it, it's a piece of cake. Yeah, uh, there's the air lines. Yeah. There. And it's not that hard. It's not that difficult to add on to them if you. You know, if you've done a little bit of copper work, I mean, it's not that big of a deal to do it. I'm pretty lucky with that. Uh, these are parts stuff. So I've got a skid steer and I've got extra parts and hoses and you name it, things in here that I use on my skid steer. Um, this one. So this, most people are going to ask what these are. That's what's called a spider. That's actually for I chain it up in the winter time because we get snow here. We we're uh, we're cold, and uh, I chain it up on all four tires, and I put these on to hold the chains tight. They're, they're um, this one's got a broken arm on it. I just have to replace them, but they work until you only have like two left. <laughs> but you know they work well. They're, it's just rubber but it works extremely well so you don't have to worry about the chains flopping around on it mm -hmm. uh, you know you put four of them on there it's super fast to put them on real easy and you go real simple these are my cruiser parts i've got a uh, 1975 land cruiser and this is all like extra parts that i use for it you know it, it could be you name it anything so yeah. have a drawer for that um, Jumping really drastically, I got paintbrushes. <laughs> but it was a super thin drawer, and it was kind of goofy how it was done, so I just thought, well, paintbrushes fit well. Yeah. Why not? Um, this here is actually not all strong hand fixtures anymore. This is drill bits and some strong hand fixtures. <laughs> this drawer is very heavy. I would guess that it probably is close to a max on what it will handle, but it, you know, it. it works. And then more painting stuff. Okay. I hate painting. Yeah. <laughs> so that don't get used very often. Then I got my welding stuff. Um, this is miscellaneous, you know, all kinds of stuff. TIG welding, I got... Uh, I mean, you name it. Yep, I love Jody's stuff. It's awesome stuff, man. I use it all the time. TIG fingers. I got probably, I'm guessing half a dozen TIG fingers. <laughs> and I've got, I've got a couple of these and I bought lots of these to give to friends mm -hmm. because they hadn't heard of it. You know I mean? I, I got them everywhere. Yeah. I use them. Excellent tool. This is, uh, this is my rod welding stuff mm -hmm. that uh, and my gas hose extra gas hoses i've got uh, some stuff in here I don't get too often very often yeah. but you know once in a while you got to have it electrical wire yeah, that's got to have that you know it's got to have a place for it and my communication wire i've got you know full of telephone or networking stuff yeah. 
the other side of this, I'm probably not going to go through every drawer because there's a lot of stuff. You guys, you got, well, you can just read, you got zip ties. I do. Auto bulbs, oh, hair it's, clippers. It's all... Hair clipper? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> this is my wife. Okay. She, I have to keep this here because she cuts my hair. Okay. Well, this, go Don't tell your wife that. Zip ties and sprinkler parts <laughs> Hey, and you know what? That's why I put labels on it. <laughs> you have to know what you got. Cover plates, bracers, these are all your electrical. I've got a lot of miscellaneous stuff. I've got metal siding screws, different colors. I've got silicone. You know, it's, uh, you know, dielectric. I've got, uh, I mean, yeah, you, all you kinds you of got... stuff. My copper, uh, because I do a lot of copper work, I have copper fittings. These are half inch. Here's the three quarter. Yep. Okay. Then it just goes down from there. These are ball valves. This is for my irrigation system stuff. I use all one inch for that and they're all galvanized stuff instead of, I don't spend the money on the, uh, on the brass. Bolts, big bolts. Yep. Yeah, you got a assortment of books and yep. you gotta have all, all the readings. These are the most important tools up here, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have these. Got to have fireball squares. Yep. Got to have them. Very cool. Okay, where's your next? Let's go around the corner. Yeah, watch your back step. Okay. This is uh, ba this is really my computer system for in here. I have an iMac, so I use it. I got a printer in here, so if I get something by way of email, I can actually uh, print it out. I've got it right away. Uh oh popcorn yeah this is the most important tool in this shop <laughs> gotta have popcorn <laughs> gotta, in shop. if you don't have a shop you don't have popcorn you <laughs> gotta have popcorn if you got a shop i've got a lot of different kinds of spray <laughs> spray paint stuff yep. uh you know i stock that stuff and i accumulate it you use a little bit you keep the can uh one of those deals i got automotive stuff that i go through this is all like cleaning and polishing stuff for automotive stuff yeah. Um, and then this is all just uh, miscellaneous. Yep. Refrigerator. Refrigerator, freezer. Refrigerator, freezer. Let's see. Everyone's going to ask what's in your fridge. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> we got. Ah. Uh, yeah. And don't have any. Po I don't have any ice cream in there, man. It's like crazy. I Normally I do, but I don't. Cold mugs. I gotta have cold mugs, though, because that goes with that. <laughs> beer in the shop. Yep, got to have that. The and then you got to have some drinks in here too. Coolers and wine coolers and beers and water. Waters and Gatorades. Got to have something to drink. Yep. Got to have something to drink. Microwave, toaster oven. The toaster oven I actually use uh, specifically for um, baking my beads for my uh, desiccant oh, yeah. filter. Mm -hmm. So that's what I bought that for, and that's what it gets used for. Nice. Cupboard, I've got, you know, just typical stuff. Yep. So no big deal. You can live in here. I do. <laughs> here. Yep. Leave me alone. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the computer system for the plasma cam is here. This is a dedicated Craftsman toolbox for this. My wife made this beautiful cover for me. Yep. Keep, Keep the dust and make it clean. Um, so in here, I've got the things I need right away for the plasma cam, uh, pencils and measuring tools and different accessories, that kind of thing. The next one down uh, is basically some of the artwork that I have and accessories for this. The next one down, I keep all of my parts for the actual hypertherm cutter. Mm -hmm. So it's a Hypertherm 65 and I've got different nozzles for, you know, fine cut 45 amp and 65 amp. Yep. All very accessible. So yep. computer was custom made for me. I've got a, uh, an APC backup for it so that, uh, you know, a UPS system so that if something happens to the power, it doesn't damage my computer. Yep. TIG rod. TIG rod. Yeah, that's, you can never have too much TIG rod. I built built the holder so that uh, you know I could access everything I've got. I don't have it in a pile. So basically you just cut it off. Clamps. Lots of clamps. Okay, uh, welding stations. Yep, this is my fabricating area. So I've got three different welders here and I've got another 
uh, actually 110, 220, a welder that I use, wire feed. Uh, if I have to go out in the field, I use that one. Uh, I've got an old dial arc, and that's stick, TIG, uh, welder, and it's a 1980s version, mm -hmm. but it's stout. It works. It works. Synchro Wave 180. I got a Synchro Wave 180 SD. That thing is great. I do. Out. Yeah, you have. Yep. Nice machine. Yeah, you were the one trying to get it away from me. And when I, I figured if you wanted it really bad, it must be pretty good. So I kept it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I've got a Millermatic 200 that I bought brand new and I uh, use it all the time for wire feed. Yep. Works really well. These are all filled with more miscellaneous plastics. I have lots of Delrin, um, sheet stock. UHMW, uh, you know, I mean, you name it, aluminum. Yep. You know, all the little, little kind of stuff I got in here. Yeah, I gotta have drawers like that. Yeah, gotta have them. Definitely gotta have them. And the uh, Build Pro fixture table. That's correct. I bought that several years ago, and that thing is awesome. It, uh, it just serves really, really well for what I do. I do most of my TIG welding on here because I want to damage it. <laughs> and, you know, it, it works well. I keep all my fixtures in here. My fixturing in here. Let me move this over. I was welding this morning before I went to work. So I've got all these drawers are full of my fixturing tooling. And it's nice to have it right here. I used to have it in a cabinet and now I don't walk at all. I just reach down and grab it. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's something that if you've got it close, you use it more often. And that's my theory with everything. You know, I need to know where it's at so that I can access it and then I use it. Yep. Never have too many claims. Oh, never. Never, never, never. Good stuff. Those two. Yep. <laughs> Good stuff. I think you have versions one through three. <laughs> I got, I, oh. <laughs> I've got them. Yes. I do, actually. Yep. Good stuff. Remember this one? I don't know. I don't want to put some holes in it for you. Yeah. You did, man. It's awesome. Yeah. It's pretty slick. Works good. Works good. I use them in my uh, wood, wood shop, too, man. Yeah, handy for wood. They're handy. But it fits perfect underneath the table. So, you know, I'm not worried about the top of that, but I never worry about damaging it. It's always a, always perfect. And then, uh, a grinding station. Yeah, this table I actually got from a friend of mine and I uh, modified it. I changed the bracing on it and everything to hold everything I needed to hold, but it came off of a, a machine tool and we don't know exactly what it was. But it's great for a welding table because I can use all my clamps for it. So I just bought a couple extra clamp sets and some one, two, three blocks and lots of miscellaneous that I can use to set up. Then I purchased this and I use this for when I'm grinding um, or working on uh, some of my metal art. Um, some of the dross, you know, you get dross on the back of it. I can clamp this thing down and use it and it works great. Good magnet. It is an excellent magnet. Yeah. And of course, all your little tidbits. Yeah. Machine tools <laughs> and the little, little bandsaw that's been around for a while. This bandsaw is uh, probably 40 years old. Sheesh. It's been modified a little bit. I put the actual cylinder on it and put a new motor on it and that's all I've ever done to it other than I, I built the catch table but you know yeah if it works yep it works <laughs> another, little, another little bandsaw yeah another uh, vertical bandsaw yep, Rockwell. it works it's a it's actually a wood slash metal saw but uh, I use it strictly for metal now yeah metal. okay what's behind Door number two. Oh boy. <laughs> bathroom, by the way. The bathroom, yep. Here we go. 